Good morning, everyone. My name is Julie Frosto with Inspire, and I get to do the fun part of asking Logan questions. So good morning, Logan. Nice to have you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we always start off with the same question, because what I always want to know, and a lot of students ask us is, all right, tell us about your career path. Um, and you had told me just prior that you're in your first year of medical college, but you finished obviously in undergrad. Tell us about like in high school, did your thinking go with, oh, I want to be a doctor or how did you get to where you are? Um, yeah. So in high school, I kind of always wanted to be a doctor as well. Certainly not everybody wanted to go that route. Like the whole time that was kind of my situation so I kind of was did like my best to take a lot of uh, science classes in high school and then I did a year at UW Green Bay and then from there I went to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities and graduated with a bachelor's in biochemistry and then following that I moved back home to Green Bay and worked for a year uh, up on the ICU at St. Vincent Hospital in Green Bay and then I went back to UW Oshkosh for a year to help get my science GPA up a little bit and then I kept working at the hospital at the same time and then that's when I was kind of applying to med school was the end of that year and then I applied to a bunch of med schools and I got in here and I came here. What about being a doctor interested you? Well, I was always hurting myself growing up. So I was always as a doctor <laughs> and uh, I just kind of always liked what they did. And I like how it's kind of like a problem solving career. You're always solving problems and trying to figure out the best thing for the patient. And I like helping patients out a lot and volunteering and stuff. So it kind of seemed like a perfect career. So. Okay, good. We already have our first question in. <laughs> Do you still continue to play sports while in school? Not really sports per se. I definitely like to be competitive and go. I like to golf and I like to play bags or like cornhole toss whenever I can. But like I played soccer in high school. I really don't play that anymore. I would just sign up for a volleyball league. So that should be fun. Oh. So yeah, there's time to do stuff. Definitely. Yeah. So ours, the schedule and how that differs, um, that I can't really give you a good answer on because everybody is completely different. Like for example, my roommate studies all the time and I don't study all the time. Either way can be doable. You just have to balance it out. Everybody kind of has their own strategy to do it. And I think there's a lot of overemphasizing how difficult med school is going to be, at least to this point. Keep in mind, I'm only in the first year, so I can't speak too much, but people kind of um, make it seem like it's impossible. But if you are willing to work hard and do what it takes, it's not impossible for pretty much anybody, I would say. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Um, I, I will get to the questions in just a moment. I'll read them off to you, but I just want to go back. Um, okay, so you got your undergrad in biochem. Yep. So I kind of, I kind of want to like look back and, and move forward and ask you questions along the way. So biochemistry, oh, sure. how did you pick biochemistry? I just kind of heard that that was like a good uh, pre-med degree. And to that point, I'm totally satisfied. I okay. felt more than prepared for med that specifically as an undergrad degree. It's certainly not the only one you can get. You can get a whole bunch of them. But I also found it, I really didn't know what it was when I kind of said that's what I was going to. <laughs> have as my major but I ended up liking it a lot it makes a lot of sense and it's not too science like I don't really enjoy chemistry that much there wasn't that much like chemistry to it it's more of like the applicable like learning about the enzymes and how they work in your body and that kind of thing so oh, I really okay. enjoyed that yeah okay and then I'm going to skip over one of the things I want to go back to but then you said you went back to UW Oshkosh to help increase your science grades can you share with us more about that like were they just yeah. not where you wanted them or yeah, so I kind of screwed up a little bit at the beginning of my undergrad at Minnesota and Green Bay. Um, I kind of took a lot of hard high school classes, so I was pretty far ahead going into undergrad. And then I got to undergrad, and I kind of started, like, my the first class I took at Green Bay in college was OCHEM. And usually that's not, like, a class you take till your sophomore or junior yeah. year. And I just, like, didn't quite have the study skills that I needed. It's not the, that the material was that difficult. I just was so used to just kind of skating by with little effort that when I got to college, I kind of got spanked pretty hard. So you're naturally pretty smart then. <laughs> yeah. If you, yeah, if you're not studying that much, that that's good. Um, yeah. But I love it. I love it that you realized you wanted to up your grade. Um, obviously that would look better for medical college, correct? For mm -hmm. the application. Yeah. There's kind of, there's kind of like no school will come out and say they have deadlines, but they all do or, mm -hmm. or cutoffs. I mean, for GPA and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the way they look at your GPA is they'll look at an overall GPA, your non-sciences and your sciences. Okay. And ideally, they want them all good. But like if you're lacking in the science, you don't have a chance because obviously med school is a lot of science. 
Yeah. So I kind of looked at my whole resume and figured that was like the one area that I really needed to focus on improving. So okay. I can do that. Would you then tell high school students to keep taking those AP classes so they can take the harder classes early on, or would you do it differently? I think most people find success if they take those hard classes early on and then keep going in. I, I don't think like what happened to me is going to happen to too many people. Mm -hmm. but just know that if you get to college and you're getting like C's, I mean, C's are okay once, but if you're like getting a lot of C's, you need to like kind of take a pause and think like that you probably need a little more help. And most colleges have that like tutoring and stuff. And then maybe from then on, just kind of take it a little slower, but yeah, I kind of jumped in right into like a sophomore junior year class as yeah. like the first college classes. And I just wasn't ready for that rigor yet. And it just kind of backfired a little bit. Yeah. And you said, OCHEM. So just so students know that's organic chemistry. Oh yes. Yep. Yep. Which is usually you said sophomore, junior year. Yeah. It's a pretty tough class. It's, it's not like chemistry where there's not too much math to it. It's a mm -hmm. lot of like learning the structures of long molecules that have carbon in them and then the different reagents you can use and how that'll like change the actual shape of the atom or not the atom, the molecule and everything. And Oh, wow. Okay. It's kind of like how you make like any kind of pharmaceutical or anything. Oh, sure, sure. Okay, and then the other thing I want to cover before we get to all the questions, you had mentioned that you got a job in the hospital, in the ICU. Was that because obviously you had an interest in working there, but what kind of job did you get or how did you get that? Okay, yeah, so I was a nurse tech. So that's a CNA job, okay. a nurse assistant job. I got that because my mom is a nurse up on the unit at St. Vincent, oh. <laughs> so kind of a little bit of nepotism there, but yeah, so I did that, and that's kind of, that was just a lot of, like, helping out the nurses, got to see a whole bunch of awesome stuff, so. Yeah, <laughs> and when you say awesome, do you mean critical patients, correct? I, and I don't mean yeah. that, I said seeing someone in critical care is not good, yeah, but no, yeah. it's yeah. interesting when you're a med student. <laughs> yeah, just crazy stuff that you probably don't even know is happening, and yeah. That kind of thing. Okay, good. All right. So let's get to the questions. Um, Ella wants to know how many hours a week do you need to study during a typical week? And why don't we look at undergrad and medical school? Okay. So I'm probably a little bit of a weird story here. Um, undergrad, I studied all the time. I studied way too much. I never did anything fun. <laughs> so I studied <laughs> like, I don't even, I couldn't give you an hour, a number of hours, but it was all the time. Weekends included. Right now, I don't study enough, but <laughs> honestly a couple hours a day at this point like I have classmates that study probably 12 hours a day oh my gosh I mean and, if and you're, you're doing all right if, yeah if you're doing if you're efficient you can put in an eight hour day and be absolutely fine okay good um all right Jody wants to know how many hours oh how many hours of studying homework do you have a night so yeah we're looking probably for medical college or what eight to 12 maybe depending on your capacity to learn yeah I mean it really depends on like the week and what's going on it's quite a bit different than like high school and college where you kind of have a steady flow if you're in like AP bio or whatever you know you're gonna have like an hour of that a night it's not really like that it kind of mm -hmm. it all depends yeah and then also there's not a lot of assignments per se okay it's just kind of only exams so try to take that for what it's worth as long as you know the material you're theoretically fine it's not yeah so you don't have to like turn anything in and make sure that it's all done and everything it's Ooh, just, high school gotta... students are like yay yeah <laughs> are the tests like all throughout the semester or just like oh um, we in? have them in blocks usually we're usually taking like three courses at a time so then we have okay. the exam for all three of those in one week and then Okay. And now we had talked earlier, you are not just studying in medical school your first year, you're in clinicals already, correct? Yeah. Yep. So tell us about that. What does that look like? Um, so a big, there's kind of a big push made in medical schools nowadays to get kids into the clinics right away. Cause that's, they're finding that's really kind of where you learn everything. You don't, the, the book work is only so effective. You need to be able to apply it. So right now I am rotating in Theta Care in Appleton. Mm -hmm. or at, it's called primary care associates but it's like a data care affiliate in appleton and it's primary care and i just kind of follow her around and help her out and do exams and mm -hmm. histories and stuff so do you take notes not when she's like leading the visit some visits she leads and some visits i lead and then the ones i do i kind of eat i take notes and do everything yes okay oh wow so she's letting you lead already yeah yeah that's amazing for first year mm-hmm Wow. Are there a lot of extracurriculars to stay involved in in undergrad? Yes. 
there definitely are, and they're kind of important, and they're becoming more important because of a lot of changes they've made into how all, everything works. I don't really have time to explain that here, but there are extracurriculars, although a lot of them kind of enhance your schoolwork per se. So okay. it's not like random extracurriculars, like there's like an ER club or something, and they might do, oh. do like a suturing clinic one night or something. So the, the extracurriculars kind of like enhance your school. Okay. Interesting. Is it difficult for you, Sam wants to know, to find time for your hobbies? Um, no, I don't struggle with that. <laughs> All right. And kind of along that line, Jody wants to know, is it difficult to balance school and personal life? Nope. Sounds um, like it was, though, in undergrad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really have that figured out then. I, you really need to uh, figure out how you learn best and figure out how to study and you should be good to go. I didn't have that figured out in undergrad, so I was wasting a lot of time. I was spending too much time studying and doing it in an inefficient way. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we're getting a lot of questions, and this is awesome. Thanks, you guys. Laura wants to know, what is your typical class schedule per week? How many classes a week in other reference? So for a typical class schedule per week, we usually have, you can average it out to be four hours of lecture a day. So that's like our science classes kind of thing. And mm -hmm. then one day we'll have like, I'll be in the clinic in Appleton. And then other days we'll have stuff going on in the afternoon. Usually the classes are in the morning, but all the classes are recorded. So really nobody watches them live. They watch them later <laughs> and then you can speed them up to much faster. So they go by quicker. <laughs> That's funny. Sam wants to know, how would you rate Minnesota's science facilities? Oh, great question, Sam. I didn't really take advantage of that when I was there because I was so busy studying. I really didn't get involved in the research or anything, but Minnesota is definitely top of the line when it comes to all that. They have research equipment that most other schools do not have and access to really complex things that you really can't go wrong with Minnesota in terms yeah. of biochemistry and biology and stuff. They really excel there. Now, how come you chose Minnesota over uh, Madison? I just, I love the cities. Yeah. I felt like I was living in a big city there as opposed to Madison kind of is the city, if that makes sense. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Minnesota's kind of a small little like corner and then there's still a huge big city to go out and see. Yeah. Um, Good. Okay. Laura wants to know, why did you originally want to study biochem? I just heard from people that that was like the best middle of the road pre-med major to go into. And I don't regret it. And I definitely will say it has helped me out a lot. A lot of our first year material is biochemistry. So yeah. And is it true that you can really major in anything in your undergrad? I mean, obviously being something more in the sciences is helpful because you need all that. But I've heard that there was somebody that graduated like in a music <laughs> yeah, no, you can certainly graduate in whatever you want. You just have to make sure you have the, if you think you might want to go into med school, you have to make sure before that you graduate that you have the prerequisites for medical schools. And they all list the courses that you need on their websites and stuff. Okay. Laura also wants to know, what is campus life like? Well, I don't really have that because of COVID and it's my first year. <laughs> but in med school, there isn't, it's, unless you go to like a big 10 school or something like that, then you might have some of that campus life. But I go to MCW, the campus in Green Bay, so it's on the St. Norbert campus, and like we don't really live on there. We kind of all have our own apartments and stuff, so we really aren't living on campus. Okay, let's talk about that for a little bit. So you're in medical college first year, and do you have a job? I do. I barely ever work um, <laughs> up on the unit at St. Vincent, but okay. um, you do not need a job. Uh, your financial aid covers like full-time everything. Okay. So like they give me money for rent, they give me money for food, they give me money to go have fun, they give me money for mm -hmm. all of that. So you do not need a job. Okay, awesome. Now I know you had a PowerPoint to share. Why don't we get that going? Oh yeah, sure. And then um, Ella wants to know how many years do you typically take to complete medical school? Uh, I'll talk about that in my PowerPoint. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So I figured all you guys would probably want to know like what you can do now. Um, yep to do stuff to get into med school. So these are all things that I came up with right away that kind of are good things. Obviously like volunteering, that's a good thing. Just get involved and mark down your hours. I always hated marking down hours because I felt like it completely defeated the purpose of volunteering if you're just gonna try to get credit for it later. <laughs> but you really do need to write it down because you're gonna need to write it on an application one day and then when you don't have it, it's kind of gonna blow. <laughs> but shadow, you can uh, shadow most professions, honestly. You just gotta, usually contact the right people. Usually that those people are on the website of hospitals and stuff and um, just start seeing what it's like out there. Uh, but get culture, just 
go do stuff you haven't done before, see how the other half lives, do whatever you can to broaden your horizons because it'll all help figure out how you learn. You might think, you know, you probably don't. What, what um, does that mean? Like explain that. Just try a bunch of different strategies with your high school classes to try to shove as much information in as you can. Because I think a lot of like people that are successful in high school, they have figured out how to kind of memorize everything and roll through. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. but in med school a lot of times that doesn't really work and that's where people get in trouble um mm -hmm. it's because you that you just can't physically cram everything you need to know you really mm -hmm. got to figure out different um strategies to learn better okay so you just kind of want to refine your processes like i know we focus on note cards a lot and those can help but a lot of times in med school that doesn't really work because there's just too much stuff to make note cards for <laughs> so there's like I know a lot of people watch these videos called sketchy mm -hmm. that's what they're called and they have like different for each disease and stuff they have different like comics kind of and those help people remember just different ways of yeah trying to get as much information in as you can um, so and then looking at your learnings way right like is, is it visual is it auditory yeah and just finding ways to work with that and just keep refining that i shouldn't have said you probably don't know how you learn you probably have a good idea of how you learn but you probably haven't refined it yet so i'd say keep working on that okay get a medical job people don't really realize that you can get these like a cna you can get a job in a hospital as a cna and mm -hmm. that'll do wonders for like your career development your personal development figuring out what you want to do all of that so keep being you a big emphasis is put on nowadays to get into med school is like your personality and not how fun you are i don't want to say that but just kind of how different you are and how you can really advance their class and all that so don't ever sell out and just become a science fiend it'll make it more hard for you to get into school just keep, make sure that you keep your hobbies and but do weird stuff up here just you got to have stuff to talk about in your interviews that's a big part of the application process. So the more weird stuff you can do, the more interesting you'd be in your interviews and then you kind of get in. Can you list one of yours? Yeah. So I went mountain biking my senior year in high school and absolutely destroyed my shoulder. And I'm not really a mountain biker. I went off this huge jump and I broke like five bones. And I'm not saying do that, but just do weird stuff. Have something to talk about. Yep. Okay, good. Weird hobbies are always good. Plan. So obviously you can kind of make a little bit of a plan. I'll help you with that later. The big, huge, major important thing is that I never realized the importance of is finding a mentor that's two years ahead of you and heading in the same direction. Let them test the waters for you and kind of show you each step of the way because to get into med school, it is a lot of work and it's kind of difficult sometimes. So if you have someone ahead of you that can kind of guide you each step of the way, that will do wonders for getting you there. Yeah, good advice. Before you go forward, we have a question from Sam wants to know. He said he's from, a, or he or she said he's from a very small school, like 30 something kids in his class. And he's interested, he or she's interested in Minnesota Twin Cities. I'm afraid that I would be overwhelmed by the size of the school. Have you ever felt this way? Um, No, I don't think I'd be prone to that, though. I really do like very large places, um, big cities, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But that being said, the way Minnesota does it is a little different than other schools do it. You apply directly to the school. So like you'd be applying to the College of Biological Sciences. And that kind of is more family like because it's kind of it's like instead of just having this big school, like I think UW-Madison, you don't do that. No, so you kind of have kids from all different schools and all the classes. And it just kind of doesn't have that from what my sister said, at least just graduating this weekend. Um, <laughs> I don't really have that kind of feeling, but I kind of got the smaller feel in Minnesota. Oh. So it, it totally depends on what you make of it too. So like joining extracurriculars at Minnesota will help you kind of find a, a close niche. It'll make you maybe feel, make it feel quite a bit smaller. Okay, That'll good. help. It depends on your major too. Like I did a semester of special ed classes there for a little bit I wanted to be a special ed teacher and that felt really small I had the same people in every single class and it was like I was at a small school so <laughs> good all right let's go back to your slides all right so this is the next one I kind of already talked about this this is just my route to get there I'm 26 right now kind of hit on this earlier um everybody's completely different with their student lifestyle everyone kind of has the same thing in common they want to help others and that's kind of evident we have a pretty team-based class, I would say. I don't know if they're all like this. I can only speak to mine, but it's not a competition at all. Everybody's always trying to help everybody. And trying to, if someone doesn't get something, just ask for help, and people will definitely be there to explain. 
but you're in a smaller school setting, correct? What did, what did you say, yep. 25 students? Oh, yes. Yeah. So MCW is called Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, there's one big campus that was the original one. It used to be the Marquette Medical School. Um, it's in Milwaukee. Um, but now they have two satellite campuses, and one in Green Bay here and one in Wausau. And they each have a satellite campus. Because the uh, medical school in Milwaukee is 200. So it's very small, probably some of the smallest. And it's also kind of a pilot program. Um, most med schools are four years. Ours can be done in three years with certain specialties. It's kind of hairy from there, like surgery, which is what I'm eventually aspiring to go into is a four-year thing, but some of them are three years. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. But we go through summers, so. And what made you want to go to GB versus the one in Milwaukee? I didn't have a choice. You had to apply oh. and then they kind of assign you. Okay. All right. And then for the doctor lifestyle, um, it's a lot of money that you make, but there's a lot of debt first. Like probably by the time you guys would be through, we're probably up to $500,000 in debt by the time you're done. So the lifestyle can vary completely based on specialty. Some people think that doctors work all the time. That is totally true for some of them. But I mean, you know, just some schedules that I know of, the 7A to 3P, Tuesday through Thursday. I know a doctor that has that schedule. It's a pretty rocking schedule. Um, <laughs> Monday through Friday, 6A to 7P. I know doctors with that too. I think that got to him though, because he just left. <laughs> but COVID kind of played a little part in that. It was probably more like 7A to 6P, but turned it into 6A to 7P. But 14 days straight, 7A to 7P with one week off in between. I know a lot of the trauma folks do that. That's kind of a crazy, one of the more extreme schedules. 7A to 3P every other week with rotating weekends. I know some of the hospitalists have that, which is like a doctor that's just kind of your average doctor in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And then there's locums, which are like traveling doctors. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money doing that. And they just, there's like needs for doctors everywhere. And uh, hospitals will hire companies to fill their slots. So these these companies have like a bunch of doctors in them and they kind of just pick where they want to go and they'll say, okay, and they'll get you a job there for a while. So you can kind of travel around while you do it if you want. Usually you're working a lot though, because if they need a locum, they need a doctor pretty bad. So they probably have a lot of hours to fill. So yeah. And you said you were interested in surgery kind of as yes. your end. Um, what about surgery interests you? Well, I really like like doing hands-on stuff. I like building stuff. I've always found that fun. I, I love chaos. So there's that. I specifically want to do trauma surgery, um, mm. which is I guess someone gets in a car accident and they come to the ER. The trauma surgeon is the one who comes down to the ER and mm -hmm. kind of calls the show from there. So okay. I really like that and enjoy the it's always chaos. And I just, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you enjoy that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need people to enjoy that. Yeah, it's my jam. So. <laughs> so I threw this in here because I think a lot of people, I'm not trying to convince you to do any of these jobs or say that being a doctor isn't what you should be because being a doctor is like probably the coolest job on earth. But <laughs> there are like a million jobs that people have no idea that even exist. So here's just, I'm not going to read them all. You guys can read those. But these yeah, are just which, a lot of like direct patient care jobs. Those are the ones you find usually in the hospital that when you start working, you're like, who's that guy? Or like, <laughs> oh, he's a perfusionist. Well, I've never seen him before. What's a perfusionist? Yes. So that's somebody that's totally in control of the blood during ECMO. Oh, ECMO is something they do when people's hearts are not working the best, heart or lungs. And it's literally an artificial, it can be an artificial heart where it just pumps the blood, or no, it can be an artificial lungs where it oxygenates the blood. Or it can be an artificial heart and lungs where it pumps the blood and oxygenates the blood. So they literally take like tubing and like people are completely unconscious for this. And they connect it up to like the entry before the heart and the entry after the heart and the, it basically just bypasses blood bypasses goes through this machine oxygenates it and then sends it back it's literally like a mechanical machine that acts as like a heart and lungs mm -hmm. and um they don't use it very often it's pretty dire effort once you get to that point but it is pretty effective at that point where would you steer a student to go to learn about some of these yeah so the biggest thing i would say is just getting a like a job or volunteering in a hospital you'll see all these people and you'll kind of get a really good idea of what they do and what their day-to-day -day life is like and if you think you might be interested you just ask them to shadow and they'll let you shadow 
Okay. So I have a slide in here later saying that the number one thing that you can do is get direct patient care. That's really where you'll be able to see all this stuff. And then I do have a little note down here under direct patient care under the nurse practitioner uh, physician mm -hmm. assistant thing. I hear a lot of people always saying that you should, oh, you should become a PA, become a physician assistant. And if, if that is your goal, you probably shouldn't have that goal. You should try to become a nurse practitioner. They're both the same job pretty much. They have the same like authority over patients they do the same thing a lot of the physicians will hire PAs or nurse practitioners mm -hmm. but the difference there is that in order to PA school is getting really competitive nowadays so you will come out of undergrad with this you need a science degree to get into PA school so you'll come out of undergrad with a, a like a, a major or a bachelor in like some science field and a lot of those jobs that you'll get because you need patient care to get into PA school you need like a, a full year of full-time work mm -hmm. so you'll need a job that pays like $12 an hour for an entire year after you just did your undergrad so that kind of stinks a little bit and then there's no real guarantee that you'll ever get into PA school because it is super competitive mm -hmm. whereas if you if you know that you don't want to be a doctor right off the bat but you think you might want to be like a nurse practitioner, if you go to nursing school and get your nursing degree and then become a nurse practitioner you have the same job uh, when you graduate with a nursing degree you can make a fair amount of change right off the bat and then there's like a bunch of different kind of NP schools you can go part-time you can go full-time you can go it's it's much more friendly with your life and you make a lot more money while you're doing it and you have like, I'd say a more thrilling job mm -hmm. immediately thereafter and you're not kind of stuck in this big hole where you no matter what you do you got to get out of it kind of thing right Ella has a question she wants to know do the direct patient care jobs usually require just an undergrad degree well some of these don't even require an undergrad degree like a CNA a CNA you just need like a class that you can take over the summer or something right um, you can do that at 16 already yeah yep um sonography is a undergrad degree nursing is an undergrad degree paramedic that's not really a degree but it is advanced education Mm -hmm. You can become an EMT that just requires a class radiology tech. That's like a two year degree, I believe perfusionist. I think that is a master's program. Not sure on that though. OT is like, are usually NPTs are usually doctors now, I believe cath lab techs. I think that's like a two year degree. Surgery techs, a two year degree dentist. Like that means you're a doctor. Yeah. So therapy, I think it's a two year degree, like a mental health therapist that I think they're usually either doctors or masters. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then nurse practitioner and PAs, those are um, master's degrees. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, so basically there's a ton of jobs in healthcare that you don't know exist yet. And if you get like a CNA job or something, you can shadow around and see what a lot of these people actually do. Yeah, so good this idea. Is my plug for nursing, I think nursing's really cool. My mom's a nurse. The people that run all this equipment in here is nurses. All these machines that are going, the people watching those are the nurses, not the doctors. Like this is an ECMO machine over here. Or I mean, sorry, this is the ECMO that I was talking about before. Oh. So actually that would be a perfusionist that's in there as well. But then the, this is a CRT machine, which is for dialysis. That's a nurse running that. All these lines and tubes were probably placed by nurses. Hmm. And I, I really don't think people really know what nurses do. So basically just shout out some nurses and make sure you don't want to do that. Because there's a huge need for those too. I'm not yes. saying that being doctor isn't cool, but I work around this a lot. So I see a lot of that and I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So this is the shortest possible, uh, possible path to medicine uh, for your undergrad in the science field. And while you're in med school, you're going to take the MCAT and apply to medical schools at the end of junior year. And then you will have three to four years of med school. First two-ish are mostly book work, um, like the hard sciences kind of thing. And the final two are mostly rotations where you go around and work with different doctors. So you get Experiences like all a psych rotation. I'll have an internal med rotation. I'll have a, which is like working in the hospital. It's kind of a hospital. I have an anesthesiology rotation. I'll have a surgery rotation. So you just kind of work with doctors and get to see what it's all about. And that's using time then. You got to really figure out what you want to do. So then um, once you kind of figure out what you want to do, you apply to a residency program. And once you're in your residency, that's when you're specific. That's when you know what kind of doctor you're going to be. Those programs are very competitive. There's this big thing called the match and everybody ranks their top choices. And then the hospitals that you might go to like interview you and stuff, and they rank their top choices for who they want as their residents. And then it all goes through this computer software algorithm thing that nobody knows how it works. And it just spits out where you're going for the next four or five years. So that's the point in which, like I said, like that's when I would be doing surgery. And then after that's done, you can always just stop there. 
or you can do another year or two of fellowship, which is like where you get some of the really advanced specialties. So for example, like you're for pediatric cardiology, you go into pediatrics for residency and then mm -hmm. your fellowship could be pediatric cardiology. So that's like how you get to that, that little field. And some advanced spots have different routes that you can take to get to the same little niche, like to be an intensivist, which is the doctor that runs the intensive care in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you can go through anesthesiology for a, a residency, or you can go through internal med and then do a, and then both of those would do fellowship in medicine. Okay. So this is kind of the quickest route. A lot of people aren't doing this fast route anymore, though. It's kind of becoming less and less common to see that. I think we probably in our class at 25 only have three people that are going straight out of undergrad. People never want to take a, a gap year, but I think it's super important and it'll help you kind of like develop. That's when I did my patient contact um, mm -hmm. work kind of thing. I got to work in the hospital, obviously, and got to see all the cool stuff and really figure out what I want to do. You'll really know at the end of that if being a doctor is for you or if you want mm -hmm. to get a job or if health, maybe healthcare isn't for you. For a lot of people, it isn't. It just isn't something that you think it is and then it's not. So yeah, just a reminder, students, we are getting to the end of our time. If you want to ask any last minute questions, Logan, I'm not sure how many slides you have. I left. think I only have one left or something. Oh, okay. But yeah, so just get direct patient care experiences. That's my biggest advice. That's why that's where everybody falters when they try to get in. Med schools want this now. They, they need this. And a lot of students don't think you do because their advisors don't tell them they do because they don't always necessarily know yet that this is like the way mm -hmm. to but you need these to get in. So these are other things okay. that they're looking for. I can let you look at those later. Do you want to go back one slide? Sorry. Yeah. All right. So yeah, so these are just a list of kind of like what, when you, by the time you graduate um, undergrad, these are things that you want on your application to be able to give to med schools. So they're going to want to see good grades in your science and your non-science coursework. They're going to want to see that you took difficult science coursework. They're going to want to see your MCAT score, which is like the MCAT you get in your med school, basically. Um, that basically is just on a bunch of um, sciences. And they're going to want to see some volunteer experiences. That's really important. They're going to want to see some research. So get involved in research in the undergrad. It doesn't sound fun, but it's pretty fun. They're going to want to see some leadership experience. Maybe. Um, they're going to want to see some serving the underserved, so kind of like volunteering. They're going to want to mm -hmm. see in healthcare, so um, they're going to want to see like a desire for a career in medicine. Mm -hmm. you showed up for your interview or whatever, you probably won't get in. You really got to kind of show that you want it. So they want to see a little bit of sacrifice. That's different for everybody, but they just want to see that you are positive that you want to be a doctor. There's three application steps: a primary application, a secondary application, and interview. And they're going to want to see you excel in all three of those, and then. They do look for interesting people from all walks of life. So they'll never feel like, oh, I didn't take the right route. I can't get in. It's, I think you said earlier, you know, somebody that got in that graduated music, that's not all that uncommon. They, people get in from all over, from different backgrounds. So always be yourself and don't think that you can't get in because you don't match this. They're always looking for interesting people that will make good doctors. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, all right. Well, students, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. We did share a survey in the chat box. If you would click on that when we're done. Um, Logan, any last minute advice for our high school students? Um, I don't think so. Just be yourself. If you want to be a doctor, you can get into med school. It's not impossible. Anybody can do it. You just have to be able to, willing to put in the effort. So if you want to be a doctor, you will be a doctor. Awesome. Well, we wish you best of luck going forward and, and hopefully we can connect later on when you're Dr. Pearson. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. All awesome. Right. Well, here's awesome. my email if anybody has any questions or needs any advice. Oh, there you go. I'm happy to help. So write that down and shoot me an email. Perfect. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you have a great day and thanks, Logan. Good luck. Yeah, you too. Have a good day, guys. Okay.